Under Rock Painting 101. I hope you guys are finding a way to enjoy this first day of spring. We're expecting snow, as a lot of people are today, on the first day of spring. So I thought, nope, I'm not having it. I'm not thinking about snow. So I wanted to do a fun, happy little flower to hopefully brighten everybody's day today. Um, even if you are expecting a few flurries or some people are actually going to get some measurable snow. So um, I'm starting out by, I, I did do one layer of yellow. I don't have any more white base coated rocks. So I kind of wanted to show you the difference. This has one coat of yellow on it. Um, since it has a white base coat, it, it definitely pops a little bit more. But as you can tell here, it still looks really cute even if you don't have any rocks base coated um, white. You can do this one directly on a rock. So I've just started with a little simple yellow circle here and I just wanted to get one coat down so that I could uh, go back over it one more time when we're done. So happy first day of spring. I see a couple people joining in. I just refreshed my computer so I'll be able to see your comments. Hi Teresa, hi Missy. So the first thing we're gonna do is start um, planning out our petals. I do wanna have room for a stem. I kinda ran out of room on this one. So I just like to go along the edges first and just give myself little dashes, places to aim. And I'm gonna go eight petals here, so we're just gonna split in half both ways, and then in half all those sections as well, just like so, just so you have a decently, you know, see, I mean, this gap is a little bit bigger. Did I forget to divide that one? No, I divided that one. So it's not gonna be perfect, but at least it gives me some place to aim, I guess you can say. And you can make your petals as big, or as little as you want, you can have a bunch of them. But I am gonna show you how to kind of make these blended petals. So you want them to be wide enough that you'll be able to get a second color in there. You could do them very skinny and still use this technique. But I suggest you have a little bit of space for working. So we're just gonna get our outlines on here first. And I have something really fun to share with you guys too today. I had my first experience of, of switching a tip on my pen. A lot of people ask if using these pens straight on the rocks where down the tips. Well, on these, and I'm using, this one is um, the 3M. These, you can actually take the tip out once and flip it over, but I will use my 1M for the outline, and that one you can't do that. So I'll, I'll let you know what I did there. I didn't order any replacements yet but I'll let you know what I did there. So just go around the edge, kind of block out your, your petals. You can make them a little bit more perfect and crisp edged when you do your black outline. Now you could make whatever color combination you want for your flowers, but I'm using the pink and the purple here. And I also have a dry, this is completely dry paintbrush. Um, it's kind of a square tip brush. You want it to be a wide edge for what we're doing. You don't want it to come to a fine point. That won't work as well. So something with a flat edge like this. And this is from a really cheap paintbrush set. Even It even has like a little chunk of glue that came on it. So it's nothing super fancy. So we're just going to start with one of our petals. And I'm going to open both colors. And I'm just going to squiggle my pink right down the center of my petal like so. And then I'm going to do my purple on the outside. I'm not gonna to touch the pink too much. We're gonna do our blending with our brush so that we don't have to worry about cleaning our tips a bunch of times. Now you're just gonna take your brush and just kind of wiggle back and forth just to kind of melt those colors together. And then flip your brush and you're gonna wiggle as well. And if you feel like it's not blending quite enough, you can get your brush a slightly damp. If you're working right on the rock, it might absorb a little bit of paint. I kind of like to still be able to see the two colors on it like that. Just make sure you're flipping your brush so your pink is always going to be in the middle and that way you don't have to clean your brush a bunch of times. So we'll do that again here. Just wiggle down the middle. I did find with the base coat it does keep the paint up off the rock a little bit more. So I was able to do you know the paint down on a few petals at a time. Now make sure just look at your brush so you got the pink in the middle so you're not putting a bunch of purple on top of your pink. And I'm just kind of wiggling back and forth very lightly, just enough to kind of blend those edges a bit, like so. I'm just gonna work my way all the way around this flower. 
going back and forth. So I don't know if anybody here, this will take me a little bit of time, is, is expecting snow as well on this first day of spring. But I'm telling you, the kids are excited and they're hoping for a snow day. It's supposed to start in the afternoon around here. But it's gloomy and it's gray and I thought this is supposed to be spring and it was actually really nice yesterday. So I didn't really expect, then I saw the forecast and thought, no. It's like winter just doesn't want to quite go away yet. It keeps teasing us and coming back. So I'm just going to keep working around. Now, if you do these flowers, I would love to see which color combinations you do as well. You could do this with your, you know, pink and yellow, or you could use whites, white and pink or white and purple. I think I'm going to play around and do quite a few more color combinations. If you do switch it up, make sure you clean out your brush in between. Almost around. I just don't want, you don't want to get too far out ahead because if the paint dries, you won't quite get that blended edge the same way. And you can do one of two things. You can put down a little bit more paint to loosen it up, or you can get your, your brush a little bit wet. But I highly suggest, see, I keep a paper towel here. If you get it wet, dab most of it back off on your paper towel. You do not want it soaking wet. You don't want to add water straight to it because you'll end up washing away a lot of your paint and that's not quite what you want to do. Now, if you do wash away your paint, it's okay. Just wait till the rock dries a little bit and then just add it right back. And you could do this with regular paint too. I would suggest probably having three brushes. One to put your pink down in the middle, like just like as if it was this. Pretend the purple is a second brush do your purple around the edge, just like so, and then take a third brush that you're using for your blending so you consistently have that pink side and the purple side. So we're just gonna get this last one here. Blend that edge, I'm just kind of wiggly. You know, it's just a little bit of a wiggle, like so. And we've made our way all the way around our flower. So I'm gonna rinse off my brush really quick so that my paint doesn't dry in there. Put the caps back on these pens. We need to add in our stem. And we'll have it go down this way. And it's okay if you go a little bit up onto that purple because we're going to do our outline as well. Let's give a nice fun stem. They can kind of be waving. Needs a little bit of a leaf here. Like so. There we go. Now I'm gonna show you what I just got done doing. Um, the extra fine tip, the one M's, I use these directly on my rocks all the time and people do ask, you know, if it wears down the tip and I and it does. Over time it will wear down the tip. Now this one looks brand new again. So it's a nice, oops, sorry, hit the camera, nice pointy tip. What I did, cause I have a whole pack of these as I swapped it with one I don't usually use for as fine a tips anymore, I swapped it with my brown. So you can see the difference of tips over time. Look at that, my black did wear down. So full disclosure, they will wear down. It did wear down quite a bit. And I didn't realize how much it had worn down to be completely honest. So all I did was I pulled out both tips, rinsed them out under water really well. I let it dry just a little bit and then just swapped them and just reprimed them, you know, smush them down. And when the ink started flowing, they're perfectly fine. You can get replacement tips, but I figure I don't do super fine lines with my brown very often. So why not just lend its nice pointy tip to my black? And I'll just use this one now, like it's brand new. It's got a nice pointy tip on it again. So I'm just gonna go out and outline everything here. I'm gonna refresh my screen over here one more time because my comments are not updating on my computer. So if you're asking questions, I will peek at them. Now, when you are using these tips, I try not to go straight into the rock, kind of at an angle. And I also don't push and draw really long solid lines. I do almost like a little bit of a hatching, you know, method because if you're right on the rock, the rock will be a little bit bumpy. And if you snag a spot on the rock, you're gonna get a jagged edge anyway. So just these little short little strokes is my favorite way to kind of do my outlining. 
And just work your way around and outline all your petals. And you can clean up your edges if you had one that was a little off. You can also even them out, your petals, a little bit too. We'll do our stem all the way down to the ground. And our leaf. And I think this one looks fine directly on a rock. You could paint your rock blue before you got started if you wanted to. See, I got a little bit over there, but that's okay because I can go right back over that with green here in a little bit. But I only had one white base coated rock left. I need to, to base coat some more rocks. I'm getting to the bottom of my bucket. I'll have to go buy more rocks really soon too. Here we go. And take your time when you're outlining. I'm always moving a little bit faster on these lives than I would be if I was just relaxing just so you're not watching me forever. There we go. So we've got our outline. Now we just have to add our little face. If you don't want a face, you don't have to add a face, but I love my, you know, the little happy face on here. It just kind of seals the, the cuteness of it. So just a little tiny smile. And then I kind of just, if you can imagine a wavy line and make little spaces for the eyes, I like to have them kind of offset to the side, like so. And then we'll add in a couple little pink cheeks. And this cute little flower is going to be ready to go. Little pink cheeks. How fun. So hopefully this brightens up your first day of spring. I mean, maybe some of you all are getting nice weather. <laughs> but ours is definitely not the best. So thanks everybody for joining in. Hi, Cindy and Missy, Karen, Patricia. Um, Missy, yes, thank you for ordering your pens. If you do need pens, the supply link um, on our website is at the top. So today, just to remind you, these ones here, the thicker ones that I was using are considered 3M or the fine tip, and then the black that I used is the extra fine tip or the 1M style pen. So all of that stuff you can find on our website. So. If you go there to order them, I appreciate it. So if you make these flowers, make sure to come back and leave a picture in the comments because I love, love to see them. I hope you try lots of colors and different styles. So everybody have a fantastic day.